When you think of XL levels in Geometry Dash, what comes to your mind? You may think of levels like Future Funk or Boogie, as they stand out against a crowd of other XL levels. But XL levels over time have become a pretty big part of the community, causing there to be a few creators and players solely focusing on XL levels. But how did XL levels come to be? And why are they the way they are today? Well, let's move to the first XL level in Geometry Dash. Before we continue on, I just want to mention that I'll only be speaking of raid levels here, as almost every unraid XL level isn't notable except a very small few. But now, let's actually talk what an XL level actually is. Well, it's actually very simple. If a level is over 2 minutes long, then it is considered XL with an indicator next to this clock icon. Levels can have 5 different rankings for how long it is, with XL being the longest. Moving over to the first XL level in Geometry Dash, the oldest rated XL level on the servers was made in Update 1.9. This means there weren't any XL levels before then. But why is that the case? Well before 1.9, you could only select the songs the main levels used. The longest of the levels was Clutterfunk, being a minute and 39 seconds. Because of this, you could only fit that much gameplay before the song ended. But when Update 1.9 released, it allowed creators to use any song on Newgrounds, enabling them to use songs as long as they like. But what is the first rated XL level in Geometry Dash? Well, it actually is something you probably have never heard of. The level in question is Disappear of Echo 08 by Zeriku. This level was actually very unique for its time, using elements other levels at the time didn't use. It used art and attempted some animations as well, which is actually a bit of a trend in the well-known XL levels of the future. After Disappear of Echo 08, which I'll just be calling DOE, XL levels would start being made at an exponential rate and also be longer than others. The 5 XL levels after the release of DOE, an auto level by the name of Roller Coaster would become the longest raid level in Geometry Dash, being a whopping 5 minutes long. But the growth of XL levels was pretty slow, with only one XL level being made per couple hundred thousand IDs. But XL levels were starting to become more popular with the release of Sky Tower, which was the 9th rated XL level in Geometry Dash. After this, XL levels were being released more frequently, and throughout the release of more and more XL levels, they really weren't that notable, with only a select few standing out from the crowd. However, there would be one that would grab a ton of attention from a bunch of people to this day. This level is of course Death Moon. When Death Moon was released, it was an absolute masterpiece at the time, and still is to this day, being the 7th most downloaded Easy Demon. This level contained amazing effects, designs, and art with the most incredible use of music to make an intense atmosphere across 2 minutes and 39 seconds of gameplay. This became a common theme for XL levels of the future. Without a doubt, Death Moon is one of the best levels the game has ever seen. It's influenced other red levels such as Reanimation. But Death Moon isn't the most groundbreaking level compared to what we have next. With the release of Update 2.0 after Death Moon, it added a lot more possibilities for the game. One of these being the ability to create minigames in Geometry Dash. With minigames, they were almost always over 2 minutes long. If you find an XL level in Geometry Dash, there's a high chance of it being a minigame. Although they aren't actually holding the classic GD gameplay, it was a step forward to shaping XL levels to what they are today. The creator to use minigames to their absolute potential was Sir Punch, as he created the Ultra Game series. This was one of the causes to start the minigame trend we know today. But minigames were not the only trend that was spawned among the XL levels, as a new trend would arise. This of course was the first travel level. Lonely Travel was a new site in the GD community and broke the record at the time of the longest level in the game, being a whopping 6 minutes long. The level was very atmospheric and it actually kind of tells a story. The level starts out with no color and a vignette blocking your vision. But as the level goes on, the level goes through different moods and you feel like you're going on this long journey. Then the first sight of color is seen at the end and you feel like you completed the journey you were set on. This level was the first time atmosphere was used in such a way to create a story. But this was not a one-time thing in GD, as future levels would be influenced by the sort of atmosphere. But a bit after Lonely Travel, the next level to be inspired by it would be Dem Travel by Sir Punch. Although this was a bit different, it kept the same length as Lonely Travel, but instead of always being gloomy and slow like Lonely Travel, this level goes between fast and slow parts, which is a common theme among travel levels. This would be what caused the travel level trend to become a thing after seeing what Sir Punch did from his inspiration from Lonely Travel. For the rest of 2.0, not much would happen with XL levels regarding the atmosphere, as there weren't any extremely long levels. But there were a few I should mention that were created throughout 2.0. The 
The first of these was Dear Nostalgis, which was an interesting level for its time. The level used 1.0 blocks and designs, but used gameplay elements in 2.0. It proved to the community that every level doesn't have to be a masterpiece, and any level can be enjoyable if the gameplay is bearable. The next level worthy of a mention is Falling Up. I know this is quite random, but hear me out. Despite not being a travel level, it does have the elements a travel level would have, such as the progression the level goes through. It starts with a blank area, then you go into the city-like area. After that, it goes into a fast-paced area, like you're falling up as the name suggests. Then a bit of a blank area that is slow which builds up to the next part, which is a stormy area. But then the storm ends and it brings sunshine and rainbows, which indicates the end of your journey. This is kind of what inspires the next few travel levels, and I don't think Kermala intended this and accidentally inspired creators. In 2.0 as well, there were a few extra levels that took the top 1 spot on the demons list. The first of which being Artificial Ascent. This level didn't really do anything to the Axel level trend, but did inspire some future levels, like its sequels Digital Descent and Cybernetic Ascent. But Artificial Ascent did bring the Axel level experience to the top spot with the nerve control brought to an all-time high. Believe it or not, the next top one after Artificial Ascent was Sonic Wave, which was also an Axel level. But nerve control isn't the biggest part of it, as it was more wave-based than nerve control-based. But it isn't notable for being a top 1 XL level. But the next level that was a top 1, Yadagrasu, was the ultimate nerve control demon. Yadagrasu was over 3 minutes long with some of the hardest gameplay for the community, requiring nerves of steel to endure through. This was really a step forward in the right direction for hard XL levels that helped with your ability to control your nerves. Shortly after the placing of Yadagrasu, Update 2.1 would be released which would bring a whole new era for creating. With all the new opportunities creators had with the updated level editor, they could make levels even more atmospheric than they were before. But the first few levels of 2.1 weren't really that atmospheric. As an example with Deception Dive, but the reason it is worthy of a mention is for its balancing. The beginning of this level is incredibly easy compared to the ending, making it pretty annoying. But this is an element seen in a majority of XL levels, as a harder ending will make you more nervous, thus making you develop more nerve control. But let's get to one of the most well-known and influential XL levels to ever touch this game. Dark Travel by Jonathan GD is just a straight-up masterpiece for its time, and still holds up to this day. The level has a fantastic progression and atmosphere. It starts off calm and peaceful, but then it starts building up suspense and gets really fast. You enter a different location, such as the nice meadow area in the beginning, then into a dark forest where it gets suspenseful. But the level enters slow parts as well, and it uses the atmosphere of the song to its absolute advantage. It goes in between parts where the mood is calm and relaxing, to intense and suspenseful, to dark and gloomy, to upbeat and cheerful. The level ends on the slow part, with the nerves you have after enduring through this long journey. This is by far one of the most atmospheric levels in the game at the time, and of course would go on to inspire future levels. In 2.1, more levels would start getting released, resulting in more XL levels, but also more top ones. There are a few top ones worthy of a mention, but the first one to mention is Bloodlust. Bloodlust was a remake of Bloodbath, but this was different. The level had a whole minute added onto it, with the extension at the end. This extension not only would make the level XL, but a true nerve control test. This instantly took the number one spot and we were seeing XL levels frequently in the top 1 spot for some time. 5 out of the 6 top 1s up to this point were XL levels, and no one really paid attention to the nerve control aspect of this game. And this wouldn't stop at Bloodlust, as we'll get to the latest top 1 to be XL in a bit. Back to talking about atmospheric XL levels, Jonathan GD is back with his atmospheric creations. Because of them creating only XL levels, he established himself as one who specializes in creating long levels. Sometimes he even spends up to a year on just a single level. Up to the point where we are right now, he's created levels like Booty 2, Future Funk, The Lost Existence, and Buru. These levels were extremely long, the shortest being Booty 2 at about 4 minutes long. They all showed the progression of creating through 2.1, but all had different moods, progression, and themes. Booty 2 was fast for the most part and never got slow. The song is upbeat throughout the entire song, and it gets you really excited. Then Future Fun goes through both fast and slow parts, but is upbeat over the entire level. It was inspired by Claire Funk and High Life, like those two levels merged together and created Future Funk. But from these two levels, Jonathan made himself known for making the endings of the levels extremely hard, 
with a misaligned triple at the end of VT2, and the three last pink orbs at the end of Future Flunk, which people died to a lot. But the lost existence was a bit different, as it was the longest of them all. It showed clear inspiration from the other levels, such as this part from Lonely Travel. The level is slow throughout the entire level, and doesn't have many fast parts. But the level is full of color, and ends on a slow note and is forgiving. But Jonathan's next level was not so hard as the others, as this was a medium demon. This was Biru, and it was an atmospheric masterpiece. I mean, look at the art at this part. Jonathan has really shown how much he's evolved with his grain style. The song is also used extremely well. The song starts off slow, but starts to pick up speed, but isn't extremely fast like some parts in VT2 and Future Funk. I think this is the best the song has been used for a cheerful atmosphere, as this level depicts just that. But I've talked about Jonathan GD and what he has done with EXO levels for a long time. So let's check what's going on in the top 1 spot. After a year of Bloodlust being at the top 1 position, Zodiac was the level to dethrone it. And it is even longer than Bloodlust even is. It is 3 minutes and 15 seconds long, being the most nerve control base level in the entire game. I couldn't imagine how nervous you would be at the end of this level, not only because of the length, but also because of the incredible difficulty and the hard ending. But this level was the second last top one to be an XL level, so it was an important level in the Hexel history, since it was one of the hardest to exist. But this level also shows poor balancing XL levels tend to have, as some parts look extremely easy compared to others. But this is a bit of a trend in XL levels, since the longer the level, the harder it is to reach the target difficulty. But other than that, Zodiac didn't have much of an impact on XL levels besides being the longest top one at the time. Let's flash forward from the beginning of 2019 all the way to the end of 2020. Nothing much with XL levels would happen in this period of time, with the only notable ones being stuff like Low Death and Misty Mountains. But the silence would be broken with the release of Castlemania by Sir Punch. This level was an instant hit and would be gushed over by the community and how unique and professional it was. This was no ordinary level. No, not at all. This level contained different routes you could go on, and this made Geometry Dash an open world game. Not only did it have these routes, but it was fantastic in every other aspect as well. The level was very well optimized while keeping the fantastic art and effects. I mean look at this, they create a whole game in Geometry Dash while keeping the same gameplay elements Geometry Dash contains. So I even go as far as saying this is the best Geometry Dash level of all time, and I completely understand. Now we're going to mention Jonathan GD once again, but this time he's creating an absolute masterpiece. Remember Dark Travel? Well, this is Dark Travel, but even more atmospheric than before, which is of course Dark Odyssey. The impact this level had on the community was incredible. And it even won the Best XL Demon Award and the Geometry Dash 2021 Awards. And this was for a short time the longest extreme demon in the game. I mean, if we put the two levels side by side, you can see how much not only Jonathan has improved at creating, but also how creating has evolved without a single update in the game. You can see the difference in effects, like this glitch effect or everyone's favorite, the slow mini cube part. This is by far the best, if not the best, XL level the community has seen even today. It does what Dark Travel did, but on a much larger scale. Dark Odyssey was the longest extreme in the game for a short period of time, and this level right here is the reason why. About a few months after Dark Odyssey, Boogie was released, being a whopping 6 minutes and 41 seconds long and taking the spot for the longest extreme demon. This is by far the biggest nerve control test seen in Geometry Dash for quite some time now. Despite being way easier than stuff like Zodiac, it is over double the length and will make you more nervous than any level could make you. And a lot of people are starting to attempt this challenge as it hasn't really been seen in any extremes for a while. But due to length, the gameplay is something you've seen in Insane Demon that is average length, but extended out to the length of Boogie. This makes the level extremely consistent and is a very common theme in other XL levels. We've been focusing a bit on hard levels now, and I think we should take a step back to the easier side again. After half a year after Buggy, a new XL level would be created. This is of course the Long Walk Home by Ren241. This is the longest raid level in the game at the time of this video's upload, being 11 minutes and 20 seconds long. With this being an easy demon across that long amount of time, it is very cyberable. Most of the victors don't even use practice mode to complete it. But this level doesn't really do much atmospherically, and it never has any fast parts at all. It only has a few speed changes, the highest being 2x speed. 
But this level is still unique with the gameplay it uses, as not many levels go to the extreme in length like this. So we should finally get to the final topic of today's video. As a lot of you know, there is an upcoming top 1 by the name of Return Zero, which will be not only the longest top 1, but the longest level in the game if rated. This is without a doubt the biggest test of nerve control the game will ever see for a long time, if not for the rest of the game's existence. This level is a total of 17 minutes long, and is still in the works. But the gameplay looks extremely easy compared to the top ones today. But the reason is due to the sheer length this has. This level is probably as hard as being several extended list demons, and quite literally, since that is the balancing of the level. Once this level gets out, it will without a doubt be the most groundbreaking XL level. But the day this level gets out isn't anytime soon, as I estimate at least a year or two before we see it out. But there really isn't anything else to talk about with Return Zero, so let's get to this video's conclusion. So from the discussion of XL levels, we have seen how they grew. Either through how difficult they were, how long they were, or how atmospheric they were. Either way, XL levels hold an important part in the community, and they are not given enough attention. XL levels are some of the best levels in order to increase your skill in this game, and despite that, they are ignored and even despised by a lot of the community. But I hope you get something out of this video, and if you are watching this, that means you watch all the way to the end, and I appreciate that. I want to just let you all know that a whopping 3.9% of you are actually subscribed to my channel. So if you could subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, have a good rest of your day.